Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar from Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Got a really fun one for you today, uh, and educational, I hope, and something you uh, don't hear much from me, and that's all about rare coins. But meanwhile, look at this absolutely lovely day out here. Uh, makes me glad I live down here every day I look at this picture. Uh, let's move along to what our subject is today, and it is about counterfeits. How many of you ever had a counterfeit or purchased a counterfeit online or on eBay or at the flea market or from a friend or just had one passed along? Uh, I know there is tons of them out there. I see them all the time in our store. We get them in every day nearly. Uh, someone bought one from someone or bought one online or got ripped off. Uh, I'm going to talk about a extremely extremely well-made counterfeit that uh, I saw yesterday uh, that kind of blew my mind a little bit uh, because again the quality of it was just so high it wasn't our typical uh, fake gold eagles that we see from uh, Alibaba uh, look at this and how do we know they're fake because they're only 45 cents to 90 cents each they're tungsten filled gold plated uh, and looks like he makes also what silver eagles look there's a one ounce silver eagle it even says one ounce fine silver one dollar uh, oh, you can get those for 45 cents to 90 cents each, too. Uh, and look, this is a Chinese website, folks, that actually sells American U.S. coins for, uh, uh, wow, I'm blown away by, well, I've seen this for years. You can buy quarters on there that work in parking meters or are supposed to work in parking meters for like a penny a piece. They counterfeit all our coins. It's just amazing. And you can buy them on Alibaba. Uh, and again, it's not like the silver eagles that we see all the time that are fake. It looks like they took a picture of two real silver eagles because those are definitely not fakes from the pictures, I can tell, just by looking at the pictures, uh, even though, uh, yeah, hey, I guess it could be. It just could be a rendering. Uh, but a silver eagle looks very close to that in real life. Uh, but they do sell these for $1.88, so Alibaba. But again, this is not the quality of counterfeit I'm talking about. I'm talking about a super high-quality counterfeit, not meant to deceive as far as the metal goes, but as a collector value goes. Uh, and before I get there, I'm going to, well, by the way, Alibaba is telling you, take a look. There's just like pages and pages of, uh, look, there's a gold eagle. Uh, let's take a look down here on counterfeits. There is a uh, peace dollar, 1921, better date you can buy for a dollar, uh, fake, obviously, made by the Shenzhen Onok Metal and Plastic Products Company. It makes fake U.S. silver dollars. And these end up over here in the United States, and people end up getting screwed buying them on eBay or online. Uh, that's why I always recommend... You know, until you get a lot of experience, buy from your local dealers. Buy local. Uh, stick with the experience of a local person. They also may have the equipment like we have XRF detectors, specific gravity testers, uh, you know, 40 years of experience on top of it. Uh, so you're definitely not going to buy gold coins or get stuck uh, or buy any fakes from uh, people like us uh, or your local shops that know what they're doing. Look, here's another one, Silver Eagle for $1.48. But I'm going to move along from there. We all know that Alibaba and the Chinese people sell fake goods, but not many people know they actually sell our own money. You can buy fake I be, wouldn't be surprised if you could find $100 bills out there. Uh, maybe not. That might be pushing the envelope for them. But it is all illegal. Even if they were to make... Uh, <clears throat> Coins that are not legal tender anymore. Uh, it is still illegal. It's illegal to make fake silver bars even and pass them off as real, which they do all the time. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, where is the picture for that? And let's see if it says one ounce in the back of it. Um, not showing the reverse on this, but a lot of these it says one ounce of silver on the back and it's just a silver plated piece they sell for a dollar. That's illegal too. And I'm going to go into that real quick why this is illegal. Uh, and we're going to get to that fake coin that I'm going to show you. It's pretty awesome, man. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute and I'll go over how I caught it. Uh, the Hobby Protection Act. Now, this is not about counterfeiting $100 bills. U.S. legal tender. And remember, silver eagles are U.S. legal tender, and so are gold eagles, or $50 denomination. So are peace dollars. A peace dollar is made in 1921, uh, uh, but you can still spend it for a dollar. So it is legal tender still. But this is just for the hobby. For example, uh, this law right here, federal law passed by Congress in 1973, covers imitation political items, let's move along there, as well as imitation numismatic items, various coins, tokens, and paper money and commemorative medals that are not legal tender. This covers the non-legal tender uh, coins, and it's basically a hobby act that says that people can't fake items uh, to try to deceive other people. Uh, but 
and it is a federal crime. Uh, and you know, you'd be surprised at how many people think they can try to get away with it. However, I don't think that the uh, government goes after these people at all. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've called on counterfeiters or people that I knew were hustling counterfeits uh, purposely. Uh, even after I told them they're counterfeit, they were still out there trying to sell them to other people. Uh, that's a crime, folks. That's a crime against the Hobby Protection Act. And if it's legal tender, even worse. It is a federal crime that you can go to prison for for 15 years. Um, whoever falsely makes, forges, or counterfeits any coin or bar in resemblance or similitude of any coin or denomination higher than five cents or any gold or silver bar coin or stamped at any mint or office in the United States, uh, uh, whoever uh, passes, now get this, that means that if you have a fake coin that you bought on eBay and you sell it to someone else, you can be charged with a felony and you can be put in prison for up to 15 years. Uh, whoever, and remember this says not, not, oh well, if you didn't know, it's okay. Whoever passes, utters, publishes, sells, possesses, possesses just the mere possession or brings into the United States any false forged or counterfeit coin or bar knowing the, the same to be false forged or counterfeit with the intent to defraud anybody. Or, uh, now here it is right here. They have to prove the intent. However, just having it, they can prove a tent. Remember, you'd have to fight the government on this. So owning this stuff, just simply owning it, even unknowingly, is a federal crime, and it, you can be in prison for not more than 15 years. Uh, so, yeah, it's highly illegal. This stuff that they're selling right here on Alibaba, you see this stuff? Uh, highly illegal. Uh, but, however, we don't have the right to go over there and arrest these people that are making them over there. Uh, but I'm sure that a lot of our uh, uh, problems that we have with China and counterfeiting involve exactly this kind of behavior. Uh, it's just plain illegal legal. Uh, so let's move along to, uh, God, I'm going to show you that thing real quick here. Uh, so anyway, oh, just ordering off Alibaba. If you order something off, uh, off of Alibaba, you are committing a federal crime and you can be in prison not more than up to 15 years. Well, I'm going to show you, dun -dun -dun, I'm going to show you this awesome counter, why am I saying awesome, but uh, uh, well-made counterfeit that could fool most people. Oh, here. Let me get rid of that right there. Uh, we'll move that out of the way. And here we go. I'm gonna. It's a Walking Liberty half dollar, 1927 S. Uh, now, if you look real quickly at it, I, I, you know, I looked real quickly, and it looked real from first appearances. You know, I got it blown up here a little bit. You, you know, some of you really experienced numismatic people say, "Well, I can see something right away." Uh, but if it wasn't a 1927S, which is really a, a tough date, a really tough date, a couple grand or more in this condition, probably well well over a couple grand in this condition. Um, I didn't even think about that or look it up, but I just knew it's an expensive coin. Um, if it wasn't a rare date and it was just like a regular 1940s uh, uh, walker and a common date, uh, I might not even have looked at that that closely. I might have just said, hey, I'll give you 35 bucks or 25 bucks for a nice BU 40s date and just thrown it in the bucket. Um, begin not being expensive, I wouldn't have done the due dil diligence. But I, I saw immediately, I said, oh, it's a 27. Ooh, nice, uh, clean-looking coin, too. Um, and let, let me go and uh, here, show you the other ones as we go here. There's the reverse of it. Let me get rid of that screen right there. Uh, there we go. Uh, there's the reverse of it right there. Uh, and there's the, the real tell on it, but I'll get to that in a moment. Um, so my first look at the obverse, it has luster. Uh, I looked, I said the color's right. Uh, look at the wear, you know, that's not uncommon to see. I'm not sure on a 27S if that's really indicative of that weak, weak area right there, but that's not uncommon to see that weakness. However, given uh, a little more looking at it, I realize that just is way too weak right there uh, to be a weak strike in my opinion. But uh, uh, if, when you look at the luster and everything, it just looked good at first appearance. And then the next thing I did is I turned it around. I'll tell you what really got me real quick was this mint mark right here. You see that? Because the back looks pretty darn good too, but it looks a little too lustrous. Things are starting to look wrong at this point, and I've got a bad vibe real quick. And I haven't even put a glass on it. I'm just looking closer at it. Um, and uh, now I'm going to put a glass on it, and I'll show you some things that uh, I, I kind of notice that I don't think you can see them here. I'll try to blow it up. I start to put a glass on it. Things just don't seem right. Uh, there's no uh, a cartwheel kind of effect. There's no flow lines. And, and, and for you folks that don't know how coins are made, they're made with tremendous pressure. Watch my cursor here. Uh, they're made with tremendous pressure. Uh, and the pressure 
it starts from the inward of the coin and what the metal does, it wants to flow out. It wants to escape from the die that it's in. So you get what they call flow lines. Now these lines start from the center. The, the metal is pressured from the center and starts to flow out towards the edges. And you get these really light lines. You see how my uh, cursor is going? That almost look like a starburst effect if you were to really magnify it super heavy. Uh, and those are flow lines. And that creates kind of like a cartwheel effect and what we call kind of like a luster effect on a coin. Well, this coin has really good luster kind of when I rotated it, but not the kind of luster that, that one would expect. And also, when you start to look at it closely, it appears to have not luster, uh, flow lines going outwards, but more of uh, uh, die polishing lines. And as I put some magnification on it, I was like, that's kind of strange. It looks like the coin's been heavily, you know, lots of die polishing lines. And you can see my cursor? You can start to see those lines moving in only one direction. Again, no flow lines there. Uh, but again, almost has the appearance of having luster on there. Put my magnifying glass down here, started to see some little pimples and bubbles along the edge here. Now I'm saying, uh, I'm not liking this at all. Uh, uh, and it didn't take that long for me to do it. You know, it, you know, if you're not in, if you haven't been doing coins as long as I've been doing it, uh, this might fool a lot of people. And it fooled the buyer that bought it, actually. It fooled him. Uh, so let me open up the uh, reverse of this. And again, this is... Uh, I didn't need a magnifying glass. Before I put the magnifying glass, I said, boy, that's the most fucked up mint mark I've ever seen. Excuse my language. Uh, and I looked at it. I said, nah, it's not real. can't be real. But I didn't tell the customer that at this point. I'm thinking to myself, am I just like, am I learning something new today? Did they make some weird snake like mint mark? But no, alas, I put my glass on and I said, there's no way that's a uh, U.S. mint made mint mark. Uh, so that was... Despite the fact that everything was just seemingly wrong with the coin, uh, I was really surprised at the quality uh, that it's made. Uh, but that just right there threw me over the edge. I didn't need to really say much more to them, although I wanted to do one more test, which I'll show you in a moment. But after putting a glass on it, same thing as the back, no flow lines whatsoever. Uh, 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 it looks real, though. Again, if you looked at it real quick, it does look real, but no flow lines uh, whatsoever. Uh, look at those little, <laughs> like, circulated marks, like it's been in a bag, too, on top of it. But the weird thing is, once you, I put a glass on, all these marks look like they were actually made with the coin. They weren't done, you know, when the coin got in the bag. Uh, and then when I put loop on the surface a little closer, again, lacking flow lines, um... And a lot of other things that, unless you've been doing coins for many years, your gut just tells you this ain't right. So I pretty much know the coin's not right at that point. And I'm going to blow up the mint mark for you a little bit here and show you. And most of you dealers will go, up. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, that is certainly no mint made product. Uh, and if it is, please, uh, someone let me know. I need to learn something. I've never, ever seen a mint mark on a U.S. coin that looked like that. Uh, so that was pretty much the big tell for me. Uh, once I saw that. But the real tell and the leading confirmation point was this right here. Now, this is why I always say it's good to buy from experienced dealers uh, or buy from local dealers, even if you pay a little bit more because you're not going to buy counterfeits. Uh, we also have the equipment to test this stuff ourselves. So besides the visual and looking and knowing everything's wrong, and I didn't have to take it out of the customer's paper holder because he wanted to return it on eBay because he had bought it off of eBay. Um, he said the price seemed too good to be true, which isn't that always the case. If it's too good to be true, true it is what? It probably is. Uh, so anyway, I put it on our XRF detector here, which kind of analyzes the surface of the metal, and here's what we got. Look how much silver is in it, which means that's a very thin plate of silver. Uh, and then below it is copper and zinc. Uh, and a little bit of nickel there. Uh, so this coin obviously would be made out of 90% silver wood if it was real. And I knew it wasn't real, but this again was the uh, nail in the coffin for this coin. Uh, it is uh, 53, almost 54% copper, 35% zinc, and uh, uh, just a little coating of silver on the surface. And you know what's interesting about this? I'm thinking to myself, well, why didn't they do it all in silver? But you know, again, the quality and the way it shows up and the way the coin got made uh, would indicate that the copper and the zinc and the way they did this, uh, they just identically copied another coin 
again, except for that mint mark, I, I'm thinking that they took a 27P and they took a uh, uh, and they put the mint mark on there themselves. Uh, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, but the rest of the coin is so perfect, it looks like it was copied from a real coin. Uh, so somehow they, they, they took a real 27, they copied it identical, and it looks like it could have been an AU coin on top of it. It might not have been BU, uh, based on how much wear we've got here. Uh, and then they uh, copied it in copper and zinc, which maybe it's easier to make a real legit uh, copy in copper and zinc. Uh, and then they uh, silver coated it. Anyway, 1927S half purchased on eBay by a customer. Uh, he thought it price was too good to be true, and he was smart enough to bring it to me. And I mentioned to him, listen, if you want to get a 27S, you're going to have to pay real money for it. Uh, but I can get you one, and I'll do it for a flat 5%, you know, or, or maybe 10, depending on how hard it is to get. Uh, but uh, I'll do it for a flat fee, and you'll get a real coin. Uh, you know, beware when you're buying online, especially on the uh, online uh, auction sites like eBay and the other sites. Uh, be very careful. There are tons of counterfeits out there, folks. We see them every day, whether it's bullion, like I showed you earlier, whether it's like the, uh, uh, where are they, the Silver Eagles. We see good quality Silver Eagles. We see poor quality Silver Eagles that people purchased from other people, bought them at the flea market, bought them from a guy on the street, uh, bought them online through eBay mostly. Uh, we see these fakes on eBay. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just people that have gone to Alibaba and purchased them on Alibaba. They come back, they put them on eBay, and they sell them there. Uh, so again, beware if you don't know what you're doing and you're fairly new at this, whether bullion especially. Don't be trying to save yourself a couple bucks by buying gold or silver bullion online in auctions. That's just ridiculous. Find yourself a good local dealer and pay a little bit to, to, get, uh, to make sure you're getting what you paid for. And when it comes to numismatics, absolutely correct too. Until you get the experience where you can tell what a counterfeit is or at least somewhat tell um, and, and be dealing with people that you know you can return the item to, uh, uh, avoid it buying online, period, folks. Uh, find yourself a good local dealer, develop a relationship with them, and uh, that does a couple things. You develop a relationship, uh, you'll get good experience, good advice, and you keep your money local. Well, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Wear Coins. And remember, read this Hobby Act Protection Act yourself. If you get caught with this stuff, you could very well go to prison, uh, even if you didn't know you had it. Uh, but I doubt any cop would do that to you. For the most part, just the mere possession of one of these counterfeits or copies is a federal crime. And again, if you don't believe me, Hobby Act Protection Act. Uh, and go look at, uh, uh, this is Cornell Law School, so go look at uh, 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 18 U.S. Code number 485 on coins and bars. You can go to prison for 15 years. Uh, do the right thing, uh, and uh, be careful who you're buying from, folks. Anyway, this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Uh, any questions on rare coins, precious metals, paper money, and other types of collectibles, give us a call. I've been doing this a long time, really know what I'm doing. Uh, again, besides the uh, precious metal parts, which is pretty easy, uh, I am an expert in rare coins and paper money as well. Uh, hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps you. And again, please be careful with your online purchases. Got any questions? Don't hesitate to call me. We're here 10 to 4 Mondays through Fridays. Thanks again. Talk to you soon.